it's here. It's finally here. After years of dreaming, months of waiting, finally, my Ford Transit Custom Camper Van has arrived. And today, I'm gonna to give you a full and in-depth tour. So before we get into the tour of the van, I just want to briefly talk about my experiences having a van built up from a base vehicle. For me, the experience was not a good one. In fact, I would go as far as to say it was a terrible one. So I dropped my van off with the company in May 2017. I was told I could expect a turnaround time of six to eight weeks, which is perfectly acceptable for a build to this specification. And the build started off really well. I did lots of filming. We got the roof cut off, we got the windows cut out, we got some carpet laid down in the van. It was all going very well. And then in about July, the work just stopped grinded to a halt. I was missing out on job opportunities. I missed out on summer. I missed out on autumn. Um, any work that had been done on the van since July wasn't up to standards at all. In fact, it was quite poor. And then finally in about December, um, things started to make progress again and, and everything started to go well. Uh, but unfortunately by now I'd been waiting seven months and it would actually be eight months before I got there. In fact, we're now in month number nine and the van is still not 100% finished. There are jobs outstanding on the van. So the guy who runs the company, Paul, who's no doubt watching this video, hello Paul. See, Paul's a good guy, he's not a cowboy. He's very good at what he does. His company builds excellent vans. But unfortunately, the company who make the pop top roof for this vehicle, they had some massive manufacturing problems. And the result of that was huge delays in roofs. I'm talking like a normal turnaround time for a pop top roof is about four weeks. Um, you know, Paul was experiencing delays of five or six months. So what happened was Paul had a unit full of vans, all convertibles with the roof cut off um, and no roofs to put on them. Um, so he had to take on more work to keep things ticking over. And he got to a stage where he then had too much work to do, too many customers, you know, getting at him, just like me. Where's my van? Where's my van? Um, and he was jumping from one van to another van to another van. He was rushing. Um, and he was not doing the work properly because he had too much on and he couldn't focus, couldn't concentrate. And uh, I have a lot of sympathy for him and I don't hold him responsible for the troubles I had with this van build. Ah, so this is my Ford Transit custom short wheelbase. Um, it's 2015 and when I bought it, it had about 10,000 miles on the clock and the reason I bought a Transit Custom over a VW, which would be the next obvious choice, was basically down to budget. If I wanted a VW with the same spec as this van, so the same age, same mileage, same you know, Bluetooth, cruise control, that kind of thing, it would have probably cost anywhere from five to seven thousand pounds more. So. I opted for the Transit Custom. I absolutely love the styling. It's a little bit bigger than the VW. It drives really well. It gets excellent miles per gallon and it's really reliable. So yeah, it was definitely the best choice for me. With regards to the build, the camper van, we'll start with the outside of the van. I had windows installed all the way around the van. This not only is because, well, it looks good, but I wanted to let in as much light as possible because it's a really small space so the more light you have the bigger it feels. On the back I've had a tow bar fitted. This is mainly to carry mountain bikes but I'm kind of thinking there might be some like storage box or something you can buy that'll go on there so if I go on longer trips I can store more stuff. That might be handy, I'll have to look into that. On the roof I've got a 100 watt solar panel. This is drip feeding power into my leisure battery. I also little things like I fitted wind deflectors on on the windows basically so when I'm sleeping at night I can open the windows and let air flow you know let the air flow through and if it's raining it doesn't matter and speaking of rain I've had a Thule Ormister awning fitted so this is obviously going to act as a nice sunshade in summer you know that, that one day of the year where we get some sun but more importantly it's going to act as a nice rain cover so that was definitely something that I wanted on the van I decided to fit the 230 volt power socket underneath the van for no other reason than 
vanity and aesthetics. I don't like plastic flaps on the side of the van. So that's hidden underneath the van. And obviously the biggest transformation was the pop top roof, which not only means you can stand up in the van, it lets in loads of light, it lets the air flow, but also it turns this van from a two berth camper van into a four berth camper van. So the inside of the van is fairly standard. It's not too different to a thousand other vans you will have seen. Uh, I'll start with the interior design, if you like. Um, I've gone for a very light finish. So I've gone for a light stone colored carpet, a light floor, and nice, light, bright furnishings. And that's because it's a really, it's a small van. And by introducing light and bright colors, you can give that feeling of space, which is important in a van of this size, I think. So I've got curtains on all of the windows. They're blackout curtains, they're excellent. I've also had a curtain rail fit to the front cab. So that is just a great solution for giving me that extra bit of privacy. I don't like the window covers that you've got to get outside of the van and strap them on. Um, I much prefer something, you know, a nice simple solution like this works really well for me. So if I could only have one luxury in this van, it would be a heater. Um, I want, you know, I live in the UK, it's freezing cold, even in the middle of summer it can get freezing cold, you know, and I wanted this van to be usable all year round. So I installed a two kilowatt diesel heater, that's basically a heater that's plumbed straight into the diesel tank. So it uses the fuel that the engine uses and it's amazing. You can keep that bad boy running all night and you do not see a depletion in your fuel tank. Uh, it's very efficient, it's incredibly warm and it's controlled by this thermostat here. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a luxury and absolutely I could not do without it. So one of the biggest decisions I had to make with this van was the bed, the rear seat. Um, and I had the choice between a rock and roll bed or a rib bed. And I opted for a rib bed. The rock and roll bed's cheaper, but the rock and roll beds don't have that massive parcel shelf at the back there configured differently. So you lose a lot of rear storage with the rock and roll bed, but with the rib, it's so much more versatile in how you can position it. It has a huge parcel shelf. That's where the dog sits. Um, and when the dog's not in the van, that's where lots of other bits and pieces sit. I have three positions for the, for the bed. So I've got my standard seating position, which is uh, okay. Um, although the seat does sit a bit high. And then if I lift up the front of the bed, drop the middle bit, raise the back, I kind of get a nice lounge. And that's definitely my uh, favorite position. <laughs> uh, that's my chillaxing position. And then obviously the back drops down and you have a decent bed. So I, I use a lot of gear. I've got my drone, I've got a couple of cameras, I've got sliders, I've got laptops. I travel all over the country, taking photographs, making videos. So power was incredibly important to me. Probably the most important thing. So I've already mentioned the 100 watt solar panel on the roof. That is connected to a 110 amp hour 12 volt battery. Um, so that is constantly charging the battery, but as well as that, the battery is connected to the alternator in the engine. So when I'm driving, the leisure battery is charging. At the front of the van, I have a 240 volt socket which is connected to the engine. So that, oh, that's only active when the engine's running, but that's great because I'm driving from A to B, I can charge my laptop or various other things. Around the van, I have lots of USB ports, 12 volt sockets and 240 volt sockets that then only work when I'm hooked up to power on a campsite. I've not had the van very long, but the longest stint I've done in the van off grid is four days. And I had the fridge on the whole time. I charged my laptop, charged my drone batteries, my camera batteries, everything, my phone. And I think the lowest I saw the leisure battery was about 75%. So, you know, it's working really well. The setup I have, um, it, it works perfectly for me. So if there's one thing I hate in life more than anything, and I don't use the word hate lightly, I mean hate, detest. It's thieves, people who cause misery, people who just think they can take what they want. Uh, they're absolute scumbags and, and I can't stand them. So I have gone to town with security on this van because this is a desirable van and because it's a transit custom, they are targets for thieves. So security with this van, we'll start off with the obvious. I have a Cat6 tracker fitted. Um, that's great, that's connected to an app on my phone so I always know where the van is. I also have a steering lock. This was really good. This steering lock was not expensive at all yet was voted the best steering lock of 2017 and it's because it's 
it's got two clamps on it so basically it's twice as hard to break off so that is a great deterrent in itself i've also changed out the factory fitted lock that comes with the transit custom i've got rid of that because that is a vulnerability a child with a pair of pliers could break into a transit custom when that locks in so i've replaced it with this much tougher hardened steel lock that's unpickable and just yeah you can't break into that lock as well as that i have a hardened steel safe which is bolted through the van floor underneath the bed here so there's no way that that safe is getting taken out of this van in the safe i can hold my laptop cameras lenses drone passport wallet everything um, and that is a, that was a must for me that's a, a really good solution so that's where all of my expensive gear stays when i'm not in the van myself so the only thing that was compulsory with all my security setup was the cat six tracker uh, in order for me to get insurance because Ford Transit Customs are a target, so they're quite expensive to insure, but because I'm a freelance photographer and this has been converted into a camper van, getting insurance on this van was very difficult. Um, the company who I use, Comfort Insurance, they would insure me, but only if I had a Cat 6 tracker fitted, and I think that's fair enough. I actually think that's standard across a lot of camper vans and motorhomes. I uh, added everything else myself, not only to make them happy because I told them what I was going to do and no one would insure me. So I said, please comfort, please insure me and I'm going to put a steering lock on, I'm going to change the lock, I'm going to put a safe in. Uh, and they did, so thank you so much for insuring me. I was, I was really worried there for a second. Um, but yeah, the only thing that was compulsory was a Cat 6 tracker um, and everything else I have for my own peace of mind. So because it's a small van, storage is quite important. I wanted to make use of all the space um, so that any cubby hole I want to take advantage of. Um, I've had lots of cupboards fitted all around the van. They're all soft clothes and they have these nice little pop-out handles. Apart from the cupboards beneath the sink, those handles, those handles don't pop in or out. Um, and that's really annoying. That's one of a few things left to finish on this van. I have a couple of drawers, one for cutlery, the other one is for my charging gear. So I've got all kinds of cables in there. So if I ever need to charge or connect anything, that's my go-to drawer. I have storage space under the seat where I keep a couple of boxes, one with tools and one with food. There's a nice roller shutter door cupboard at the back of the van with a secret compartment, although it's not really that secret, underneath there. And that's a very good usable space. Further around the back of the van, I have a custom compartment for an outdoor table and a custom compartment for two chairs um, and that's great that that's great for those summer days when you want to sit outside and do some work there's a neat little space at the back where the bed is which is like a little cubby hole you can slide your phone into and in that cubby hole is a usb port so that's, that's a nice little touch i like that as well at the back of the van i keep my toilet this is a porta potty and i'll be honest i've yet to use it and i'm a little bit hesitant <laughs> I also have a bespoke tripod cupboard. Actually, no, that's, it's not true. It's not a bespoke tripod cupboard. It just so happens that my tripod slots perfectly in it. So people are always amazed when they see me open this tiny cupboard and pull out this massive tripod. Uh, <laughs> no jokes, please. So one space I don't see utilized too much in a van like this is this area here. And this is my little, I call this my film cupboard. So I've, got, uh, I've padded this out with foam so that it's nice and soft so anything in there doesn't get damaged or slide around and in here i keep my large format camera lenses that kind of thing so that's my film photography cupboard if you like the front seats are swivel seats so while i say front seats the passenger seat is a swivel seat the driver's seat is not yet a swivel seat that's another thing that is yet to be completed on this van but you know i've, I've been promised it will be done so yeah, I'll keep you updated on that one. In terms of amenities, I've got a fridge. This is fairly standard. There's a nice little freezer compartment. I've got a two hob burner. I've got a sink. I've got a gray water tank and a fresh water tank that I keep in the cupboard. Now, the reason I wanted the fresh water tank in the van, I could have got one mounted underneath the van, um, but I want one, I want to drink from it. So by having a removable bottle, essentially, I can rinse it out with warm soapy water and keep it clean. Um, so that's, that's handy. But unfortunately, the cupboard, this cupboard wasn't built to house these water tanks. It was built to the wrong size. So it's a really, at the moment, it's a really inefficient use of space and it really bothers me. So I'm having some custom bottles made, which should fit perfectly in that space and make it much more usable. But yeah, at the minute, it's, it's a bit of a squeeze and it's, yeah, I'm not happy with it. 
I have lights on both sides of the van, uh, spotlights on the left hand side of the van and I have this nice LED strip underneath here which um, yeah, which is nice, that's nice. Um, but one thing I would change if I could do this build, build again would be either to have a dimmer switch installed or to make the LED lights touch sensitive. So basically if I'm sat in this van at night time and even if I only have one of the lights on, it's, it's too bright and there's no way to dim that down. So that is definitely one thing I would reconsider. This panel here controls my lights, it controls my tap and it shows me the state of the battery of the van. It also shows me the state of my leisure battery. So this is basically your standard, I don't know, your standard operational panel, if you like. Um, yeah, yeah. Hmm. One thing I did purchase, actually, um, I, I wanted a rug for the floor and I found this mat. It's like a, it's a rug, but it's like, it's memory foam, so it's really thick and it's, it's not only is it a perfect size and you can move it around because it's a nice shape, um, it's really good for kneeling on. So if you've got, you've got, you've got, I find with a van like this, I'm kneeling down all the time. This van, uh, not this van, this mat is the best purchase I've made, I think. So one of the problems I had with this van was the table. If I wanted to store the table behind the driver's seat, which is the normal position, it would have meant having a really, really small table. And I didn't want to store it in the back of the van because that would have meant having to get out the van to get the table. And you know, when it's raining and muddy outside, that's no good. So I ended up storing the table underneath the seat, which I thought was a really good solution. It doesn't take up any storage space. The only downside is you have to open up the bed pull out the seat, but that really isn't too much of a big deal. So that's pretty much the van. Um, I haven't had it very long, so that it's not got those personal touches, but I am sure it's gonna grow, change, and evolve over, over time. I've already got ideas in my head about what things I want to add to it and things I'd like to change. But more importantly, I'm so excited for the possibilities that this van is gonna open up. You know, I've dreamed of having a camper van for many, many, many years. I honestly never thought I would see the day where I had one. And then my landscape photography career seems to be taking off, which opened up the chance to be able to use a van. Um, and then I was lucky enough to get a VW California and take that around Scotland, which confirmed that yes, I definitely want a van. So to have one now, my own van, um, I'm super excited about the opportunities, the freedom, the flexibility that it's gonna open up. It's, um, yeah, it's a nice place to be and I'm, I'm very, very fortunate and very blessed and I'm just going to sound cheesy, but I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it and I don't care. I don't think I would have this van if it wasn't for you, <laughs> my subscribers. So thank you so much for subscribing. And if you ever see the van and you see me pottering about, please do come and say hello. Um, so yeah, this is it. This is the start of my van life. Although I'm not living in it, I'm definitely working in it. So yeah, very cool. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, bye for now.